Hell of a thing, Bed Bath and Beyond accused of being racist because they called the police on customers who were simply shopping. Here's a video. So um, apparently someone called us, they thought maybe we were shoplifting or something. Okay. Do you know who placed that call? I do not. Okay, well, it was a store. Yes. So do you know, it was, I mean, we've been one of your employees. What, what would you like me, what do you need help with? I would like to understand why they were called, right? That's like simple. Why were the police called with the three black people thinking that we were shoplifting? I paid six hundred dollars for my thing, so obviously I, w- I didn't shoplift. Mm-hmm. I want to understand why you thought I was shoplifting. You didn't place the call, but one of your employees did. I'd like to know why. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm not that's the standard, right? I'm not being hostile or anything. Me about what right. Because he and was, he asked the woman did we pay. I don't care. I mean, if there's people, big purchase items, that type of thing, there's usually a question. We just want to make sure. Okay, usually a question. I can understand that, but police being called, I can understand that. Right, you you also use your question, so maybe the store will ask a question, or maybe you all follow me. Maybe you follow me around, sure. Rachel, but can you come to the front? but that's not what happened. The police were called. We're pot, potential shoppers, which means we, that we call the someone... police all the time. They have our backs. We were okay, well that's fine. Them. But you call, you didn't call the police because we did shop. You called police because you thought we shopped. If I spent six hundred dollars, I paid my money. I didn't shoplift. Did anybody you say anything? Them. Did anything say? Did anybody yeah, say the anything? officer asked her, "Did we pay?" So someone did say something. I did pay. But what happens is you called the police while we were still on this side of the store. We were here for over an hour. So you called police when we first really got in here. Okay. Time out. No, we don't call time out. I'm coming up. I hear what you're saying. Okay. Sure. Come on. They want to know why the police were called. And they want to talk to the person who did it. And they want to know why they did it. Yeah, while we were profiled. Exactly. Oh, I have a call. You called? It's my right. It's your right to do what? Oh yeah, you yeah, you hear right. So your right to do what? It's my right to call. Because you thought the three black people were shoplifting, why? They didn't say that. You called the police, you said we have a potential shoplifter. So you did say that. No, I'm reporting you lost your mind. Are you with these guys, sir? No, she's not with us, but she can stay. I have more video and what you hear in the background are other customers being made aware of what's happening. So they start recording as well. Now there are three uh, quotes that I want you to remember. One, big purchase items, there's usually a question, one worker says. Another comment, we call the police all the time, they have our back. Third comment, it's my right to call the police. Continue. I, mean, I just want to know, so sir, to so make sure I'm not hostile, I'm not being violent. I just want to know why the store called the police because they thought we were shoplifting. We just purchased a new home, right? We came in because you are closing, it's a closing sale. I didn't realize there was like a maximum number of items you could buy, right? So we were not shoplifting, but the police were called because we thought we were. Because they have- oh, We're not, you're not gonna be able to, to resolve this. I don't know what you want us to say. But I don't care if the white, black, or green. If somebody's walking around with big, high ticket items, it, there's a lot of people all. walking around with high ticket items. I mean, Dyson's. So wait, right. the fine high ticket that's item. That's why they walked it up to the counter so that. So what? Here's another thing, sir. Just so we can have the record straight. The high ticket items, the most expensive thing I had in my bucket was the vacuum that y'all took from me and put you, behind the counter. So the high ticket items, so to be so so to be clear. Right. You all called the police because the high ticket items were in our budget. Yeah. I'm sorry? We're not getting anywhere, so if you got a complaint, follow the complaint with their corporate office, okay? Well, because we're done here. Our, our involvement is done. Well, let me ask you this question. No let me ask you this question. You, well, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to him. Okay. Okay. So, what I'm asking you is when you all came out, and they said we had three percent shoplifters. They describe us at all. They just like they just let you know who we were. Two black males. Two black males. Yes. Okay. And so y'all didn't come find us. Y'all just stayed here until we came out, right? The main thing was nothing was concealed. So that's right. why we just stood by the door and we let it go. And right. I even mentioned that they could be paying for this. Right. So that's why we didn't okay. approach or we didn't come up to you. Okay. The irony of this. Let me first say to the individual who documented this, thank you. We need more like it. Also to the officer. The officer said, listen, the reason we did not even approach you is because there was nothing concealed. And we even told the store, um, they're probably just buying things. Wow, the police are saying to loss prevention, this is a little too racist for us to deal with.
So we're going to just let this one go. All right. All right, call us when there's something here. And then the workers acting as if they are unaware as to what he's looking for. He's looking for an apology. An apology. He's looking for remedy and conversation because the apology acknowledges the humanity of the other person that you just violated. They were shopping, they're patrons. They're spending money in your establishment, helping pay your wages, promoting your company, who obviously needs it because they're going out of business. So he's there and this is the way you respond to a very simple and very appropriate question. Why call the police on a paying customer? All right, uh, we'll see if the company has a collective response. Max, what are your thoughts here? Well, you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, the racism was too overt for the police to get involved. I mean, how does that happen? The, this encounter is textbook. I mean, it should be played for people in how you handle these situations. And the reason those employees couldn't explain why this happened wasn't because they didn't know. It's because they said some things to each other that they were suddenly very uncomfortable saying in front of this person. And why were we never approached? Because they were clearly intimidated. And it's it's part of that fear and, and criminalization of black people for just existing. I mean, when, when told that they were suspected of shoplifting and the police say, well, they're not hiding anything. They could just be shopping. I mean, that's something that happens every day in this country. It's an indignity black people face every time they go out to shop. And this, this person handled it expertly. Yeah, very well documented it appropriately, made sure that the right questions were posed. I do hate that we have to continue to remind people we're not being violent or aggressive when a Karen can be violent and aggressive and complain and still not be arrested. Uh, but he did it properly. And at this point, obviously, at least the branch in Ohio uh, where this happened, Bed, Bath and Beyond should release a statement.